Good morning everyone. Today we will be discussing the epidemiology of malocclusion. It will be coming as your short note. Uh, the term orthodontics is coined by a Frenchman Le Fillon in year 1839 which means uh, it is a Greek word which means ortho means correct or uh, odontos means tooth and ICS that is uh, means uh, science. So the epidemiology of malocclusion has been variedly studied in uh, India. It has been uh, many much uh, conclusions many much has been drawn regarding the malocclusions so we will be discussing the problem associated with malocclusions are uh, poor facial aesthetics or uh, risk of caries predisposition of periodontal diseases psychological disturbances trauma abdominal dysfunction dmj problems etiology when it comes to your etiology of malocclusions moyer's classification first based on hereditary or uh, that is neuromuscular system bone teeth and soft parts development defects in the unknown origin then is trauma prenatal trauma and birth injuries and uh, postnatal trauma fourth is due to physical agents premature extraction of primary teeth and the nature of food fifth is habit uh, thumb sucking and finger sucking habits tongue thrusting habits lip sucking and lip biting habits postures and nail biting habits Sixth disease, uh, systematic disease, endocrine disorders, local diseases, nasopharyngeal diseases and disturbed respiratory functions, gingival and periodontal diseases, tumors, caries, dental base abnormalities, or uh, anteroposterior malrelationship, vertical malrelationship, lateral malrelationship, disproportion of size between teeth and basal bone, congenital abnormalities. Uh, Pre-eruption abnormalities includes abnormalities in the position of developing tooth germs, timing of teeth eruption, supernumerary teeth and teeth abnormal in the form, prolonged retention of deciduous teeth, large labial frenum and traumatic injuries. Post eruption abnormalities, there are musculars, uh, sucking habit, achieve muscular force, abnormalities in the path of closure, premature loss of deciduous teeth and third is extraction of your permanent teeth. Coming to the angles classification, criteria for classification based on the mesodistal uh, relationship of the tooth. The maxillary first molar is the key to the occlusion based on the relation of the lower first permanent molar to the upper first molar classification class 1, class 2 division 1, class 2 division 2 and class 3. You can see in the first diagram class 1 mesial cusp should occlude the mesial groove. Second class 3 mesial cusp of upper maxillary first molar is occluding between the uh, interdentous piece of first and second molar. Uh, class 2 division 1 mesial uh, mesial cusp of uh, per maxillary first molars uh, is uh, in occluding with the uh, interdental group of second premolar and molar uh, class 2 division 2 mesial again the distal cusp is occluding with the uh, mesial cusp of uh, per maxillary molar it is occluding with the interdental piece of second premolar and uh, first molar but there is a retrusion of your uh, anterior teeth you can see in division 1 there is protrusion of your anterior teeth whereas in uh, division 2 there is retrusion of your anterior teeth. This is the epidemiological triad again uh, agent host and environment are the factors for uh, causing this malocclusion. Those factors are race and ethnic, facial features vary with different races, homogeneous racial grouping is there and mixed racial status will develop uh, the jaw size and will be a host factor for malocclusion. Then there is gender or sex, lower anterior crowding uh, common in uh, males, whereas age incidence of normal occlusion and deciduous dentition is about 60%. Then there is fourth hereditary or uh, significant role tooth sizes, width and length of the arch, height of palate, and crowding of uh, crowding and spacing of the teeth is then. The hereditary plays a part in the following conditions: congenital uh, deformities, cleft lip and cleft palate, facial asymmetries, micrognathia and micrognathia, uh, microdontia and microdontia, oligodontia and anodontia, tooth shape variations, frenum, deep, uh, deep overbite, crowding and rotations of the teeth, mandibular retributions and mandibular prognathism. Then there is congenital defect can be cleft lip and palate, cerebral palsy, Torticollis, uh, cleidocranial uh, dysostosis, and congenital syphilis. Predisposing metabolic climate and disease, endocrine imbalance, there can be caused metabolic disturbances and infectious disease. Intraoral variations, abnormalities, 
anomalies uh, in the number of teeth and abnormalities of tooth size, anomalies in the tooth shape, abnormal labial frenum, premature loss of deciduous teeth, prolonged retention and delayed eruption of the permanent teeth uh, causes uh, congenital absence of uh, permanent teeth, presence of supernumerary teeth, deciduous roots, premature loss of deciduous tooth and mucosal barrier. Abnormality, uh, abnormal eruptive path, like still ankylosis and habits, habits like thumb sucking, finger sucking, lip biting, nail biting, cheek biting, pencil object sucking, pencil or foreign object sucking, uh, mouth breathing, clenching, bruxism and occupational hazards. The aging factors include bacteria, tissues and dietary problems, whereas environmental, prenatal and postnatal are there German measles and medications taken during pregnancy may cause congenital deformities including malocclusion, postnatal, including birth injuries, forceps delivery, then there is cerebral palsy. This preventive orthodontics, it can be come, it can come as your short note. Uh, what preventive procedures you can take, parent education, caries control, care of deciduous dentition, management of enclosed teeth, maintenance of quadrant twice tooth shedding timetable, check up for the oral habits, occlusal equilibri uh, equilibration, extraction of supernumerary teeth, space maintenance, management of deeply locked permanent molar, management of abnormal frenal attachment. Then interceptive orthodontics, again it's a short note, what interceptive orthodontic interceptive procedures you can do, uh, serial extraction can be done so that the permanent tooth will uh, erupt at, a, at its normal uh, Position, correction of developing crossbite, control of abnormal habits, peace regaining, diastema closure, muscle exercise, interception of the skeletal malrelation, removal of soft tissues or bone barrier to the eruption of teeth. Good morning, students. Today we will be discussing uh, epidemiology and etiology of dental caries. Now, the word epidemiology is Greek word where epi means upon, demos means people, and logy is the study. Uh, it has uh, various authors has given uh, various definition. The most accepted one is of, Dr. of John M. Last in year uh, 1988, it said that it is a study of distribution and determinants of health related states or events in a specified population and the application of this study for the control of health problems. Coming to the dental caries, dental caries is an irreversible microbial disease of the calcified tissues of the teeth characterized by demineralization of an organic portion and destruction of the organic substance of the tooth which often leads to cavitation. There are classification of dental caries, there is according to morphology, it can be according to chronology and dynamics according to my, uh, uh, morphology, uh, and it is on the anatomical sites according to chronology, it's according to the age and in dynamics that is according to the severity and rate of progression. There are some changing patterns of the dental caries, dolichocephalic skulls uh, never exhibited the dental caries in 12,000 BC whereas bradycephalic contained uh, carious teeth uh, and the philanthropus has no evidence of tooth decay. Uh, the changing patterns, iron age in medieval period overall caries prevalence were very low that time. In 16th century, cane sugar industries are uh, developing rapidly or uh, this dental caries. In 17th century, there is caries at CEJ was not common. Smaller increase in interproximal caries at the beginning of 17th century. In the 19th century, interproximal and visual caries cases were very high. Uh, caries rate in contemporary isolated population, relative freedom of the dental caries. Global comparison of dental caries prevalence in contemporary population that is lowest in 0 0.5 to 1.7 decade missing field for the Asian and the African countries and highest is in 12 to 18 or uh, DMF uh, for the America and Western countries. Uh, low to moderate caries rates were in the Indo-Chinese region, Bar Burma, South Vietnam and mainland China, Taiwan and India. Coming to the declining of prevalence of caries with the widespread of fluoride toothpaste, fluoride lozenges, fluoride tablets, increase in fluoride mouth rings, increase in for fluoride dietary fluoride supplements, uh, water fluoridation, changes in diagnostic criteria has uh, tremendously uh, declined. There is tremendous decline in the dental caries. You can see in the graph the developing countries there was high prevalence of the dental caries at the end of year, uh, year 19, uh, uh, big, uh, the end in 1980s. There was slight decline then again the graph is there is slight declination, slight incline, uh, increase of dental caries. 
whereas developed countries there is tremendous decrease in the dental caries so the facilities they are having and the mm-hmm. protocols they are following current trend in dental caries was global map of bmft was developed in year 1969 We showed the high prevalence of caries in industrialized areas. WHO bank has shown that there is 50 percent, 51 percent had DM3 DMFT score, that is decayed missing field D score. Uh, 2000 data uh, in year 2000 data of 184 countries has recorded WHO oral health and see that there is 60 percent had less than DMFT score of three. Percentage of, percent of countries having three DMFT or less is 74 percent in among total 139 countries. This is the map showing the Southeast Asian having the DMFT of around in year 2004 it was around 1.2 uh, and was highest in European countries that is 2.57 and in American uh, countries uh, that it was 2.76. Current trend in dental caries you can see that the 12 years are having the maximum caries prevalence that is mean DMFT is around 1.8 35 to 40 having the very high prevalence of dental caries it is 5.4 percent. 65 to 74 years is again having a very high prevalence of caries that is 14.9 DMFT as this uh, year 65 to 74 years previously uh, during their earlier uh, time they didn't receive any uh, therapeutic or any preventive measures to prevent the dental caries that's why the mean DMFT is high among that age group. These are the caries prevalence. In the permanent teeth, you can see the highest is in lower first, lower first and second molars and upper first molars, and least in the lower incisors and lower canines. Susceptibility, caries are seen in individual tooth surface. Highest is in occlusal, then it is in mesial surface, then it is in the buccal surface, and then in the lingual surface. Uh, coming to caries prevalence in the permanent teeth, first there will be mesial and distal surface of molars, and then will be mesial second molar, mandibular. Second molar, and the last will be on the remaining surface that is on the tip or on the gingival one third area. Uh, epidemiology of periodontal disease. Uh, this epidemiology is a Greek word, uh, which in which the epi means upon, demos means people, and logos is for study. So basically, it is a study done on people. Uh, coming to definition, various definition, various authors give uh, different definitions. The most common is given, uh, most common accepted definition is uh, given by John M. Last. It states that it's a study of distribution and determinants of health-related states or events in a specified population, and the application of this study for the health problems. Again, two words: uh, distribution and determinants plays a vital role in this definition. Coming to the aims and objectives, uh, it is used to describe the size and magnitude of a disease, to provide the data essential for the etiology and for the cure of any disease, and to identify the etiological factors. Coming to the principles, there are total four principles. First is exact observation, second is correct interpretation, third is rational explanation, and fourth is scientific construction. The first is exact observation. It should be the whatever you are. Observing should be strict, vigorous, accurate, and precise. Correct interpretation that it should be free from error. It should be free from bias. Uh, rational explanation, intelligent, sensible, and reasonable. It should be scientific construction by expert knowledge and technical skills. Coming to the epidemiology of periodontal disease, one of the most important challenges in the uh, dentistry. Periodontium is a connective tissue which is surrounded by. Uh, or so connective tissue organ covered by epithelium and attached to the teeth and jaw and gives support to the teeth. Periodontium consists of four things: that first is gingiva, periodontal ligament, alveolar bone, and cementum. We'll discuss that. This is the alveol- alveolar bone surrounded uh, for the part of uh, subepithelial connective tissue, and the gingiva is surrounding the neck of the teeth. Cementum is overlying the tooth is attached in the adjacent cortical surface. Uh, periodontium comprises of two connective tissues. First is uh, two mineralized connective tissues that are cementum and alveolar bone, and two fibrous connective tissues. These are uh, periodontal ligament and lamina propria of gingiva. Coming to gingiva, gingiva is the uh, part, that part of oral mucosa which surrounds the teeth in a neck-like uh, form or a collar-like form. They are divided into marginal, attached, and inter- interdental gingiva. You can see in the diagram gingival sulcus. Pre-gingival margin, pre-gingiva, pre-gingival groove, attached gingiva, here the alveolar bone and cementum. 
to periodontal ligaments are the fibrous connective tissue that is noticeably cellular and contains numerous blood vessels. They give attachment to the tooth in the tooth sockets. Uh, they are of uh, transeptal, horizontal, vertical, oblique and interarticular fibers. They are a terminal portion of principal fibers that insert into the cementum. They are called as Sharpies fibers. These are the principal fibers or uh, interarticular fibers, bone, oblique fibers. They give so support to the, to the tooth in the socket. Into periodontal diseases, there are group of inflammatory diseases and one of the uh, one of the two major dental diseases. Uh, this is a healthy or uh, uh, healthy tooth and healthy periodontium. You can see there is no pocket formation. Uh, that is free gingival groove where the uh, probe has been inserted. If there had been any gingival uh, unhealthy gingiva, there will be more pocket formation in the uh, tooth and gingival area. Due to periodontal diseases, uh, classification by American Dental Academy of Periodontology uh, described uh, gingival disease uh, as plaque induced, non plaque induced, chronic, localized, and generalized. Plaque induced plaque plays a major role in the gingivitis. Plaque bacteria, which are continuously secreting in the mouth, uh, cause this gingival diseases. Uh, chronic periodontitis can be for a selected uh, area, like suppose covering two to seven uh, teeth and generalized whole uh, mouth uh, then there are aggressive periodontitis can be at a very early age there will be mobility of the tooth or it can be due to the loss of masticatory it can result in loss of masticatory functions they are also of localized and generalized type periodontitis as a manifestation of uh, uh, systemic disease can be anac or nac or uh, necros uh, necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis Abscesses, gingival abscesses is there, pericoronal abscesses, then can be due to periodontal, uh, sorry, endodontic therapy, endoperio lesions, combined lesions can be there. Measurement of uh, periodontitis, interpretation of epidemiological data of periodontal is difficult to because there is inconsistent the methodology used. There is no specific index, index to measure this epidemiological data. There are many multifactorial uh, diseases, three forms of gingivitis are there, gingivitis, periodontitis and with the atrophy of age. So it is not a particular thing to measure. There can be gingivitis, periodontitis and the gingiva will go down. It causes gingival recession with the age. And there is no proper index also to measure these um, factors. Various scales in use, various composite index has been used like a gingival index uh, given by uh, Lohan Wilson. Uh, low and cellness. Uh, the basic clinical measures of periodontitis apart from the clinical bleeding and radiographic assessment of the bone, the bone loss, our clinical attachment loss and probing depth. The agent factors, bacteria, plaque and calculus are the three agent factors which are causing this gingivitis and periodontitis. There are two types of plaques, suprasgingival plaque and subgingival plaque. Uh, smoking and alcohol are the other agent factors which are strongly associated with the periodontal disease. Many studies have been done which shows that smoking and alcohol are uh, directly proportional for causing the uh, periodontal diseases. Prevalence increases with 2 to 7 times. In 1975, National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey stated that the tobacco risk is 0. Point, uh, sorry, 2.5 to 6.0 and even higher uh, for causing a periodontal disease. Uh, it leads to slow healing, the use of tobacco, there is slow, so slow healing, inhibits granulocyte function and there is dehydration also. Current model of periodontal diseases, few people exhibit advanced periodontal uh, destruction. At very age, there is juvenile periodontitis, mild gingivitis is common, it is almost present in every individual. Gingivitis and periodontitis is associated with the bacterial flora. Coming to the Indian scenario, a study conducted by Mehta et al. in 1956 among 1,640 children uh, of Bombay aging say 11 to 17 years, uh, the prevalence of the gingivitis uh, is almost 93.7% and it has been increased with the age. According to the Nagaraj Rao et al. in the year 1980, he conducted a study among 500 children and said that 28% had marginal gingivitis, whereas 7.2% had this general, chronic generalized gingivitis. 
Uh, according to the Ashwini Rao et al. in 1996, uh, among 60 years in Mangalore, he conducted a study. Shallow pockets were seen at 32.29% of dented subjects uh, and none of the subjects had completely healthy uh, periodontia. National Health Survey conducted in India, uh, the prevalence, it stated that the prevalence of periodontal diseases increases with the age. These are the four WHO uh, given age groups, 12% uh, uh, at the age of 12 there is 57%, uh, at the age of 15 there was 67.7% of periodontal diseases. The most highly uh, 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 increase in the prevalence was noticed among the year uh, 35 to 45 years of uh, age people. 65 to 74 exhibited 79.9 percent prevalence rate approximately. Uh, periodontal diseases can be controlled in if the proper promotion, health promotion and health prevention can be done. Uh, various use of dental devices, proper toothbrushing techniques and the uh, brushing habits, oral habits can lead to your healthy gingiva, uh, healthy, uh, gingiva and healthy periodontium. Healthy periodontia plays a major role in total function of the body. It gives you a healthy atmosphere for the mastication, for your aesthetics, everything. That's why healthy maintenance of healthy periodontium is very important for us. This I conclude my lecture.